Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. A few people have brought to the attention of even at the doors of the swift movement individual states are pushing for a cashless society where eventually everywhere on the planet will no longer need cash. The first country that is pushing for a cashless state is Denmark, with its Scandinavian neighbours Norway and Sweden is leading the global trend towards electronic money. South Korea is moving towards a cashless society and Australia is also pushing for a cashless society and the UK is pushing for a cashless society where people are already using contactless payments but many are concerned that it's going to greatly jeopardise the poor. The London Guardian said that we should fear a cashless society for as we already live in a world that is as far as the distribution of wealth is concerned about as unequal as it gets. It may even be as unequal as it's ever been. My worry is, the journalist said, if that a cash society may exasperate inequality even further, well, that's the aim. For the economic instability of the world is marginalizing groups in many Western societies, where the poor are being greatly affected by the financial oligarchs, and the next generation of young people, the millennials, are paralyzed by the global economic crisis. Even those in the media who have a deep knowledge of banking and international finance uses biblical language to describe the road that is leading us to a cashless society. They're taking it even further. We well, will need no card now, not even your phone, just your face. And they are pushing for a system to pay just using facial recognition. And while many observers can see where it is leading, the companies and their competitive nature see it as a great business venture that will increase great revenue in their kitty. On the surface, there seems to be a very intense tug of war between Western intelligence agencies and the tech companies. Well, that's what it looks like. When self-interest clash, it can create a friction and a heated storm. But as both are money-making information gathering agencies, they both have the same goals. Intelligent agencies who come under the name of SIGINT, that is Signals Intelligence, can easily tap into your phones. According to the German magazine Der Spiegel, for an agency like the NSA, the data storage units are a gold mine combining in a single device almost all the information that would interest an intelligence agency. Social contacts, details about the user's behavior and location, interests through search terms for example, photos and sometimes credit card numbers and passwords. Smartphones in short are a wonderful technical innovation but also a terrific opportunity to spy on people, opening doors that even such a powerful organization as the NSA couldn't look behind until now. What is very interesting about that statement is that you have all these Christians teaching that the mark of the beast is a literal, not a spiritual mark, a microchip that can track you, when they are telling us that they are already tracking you through the chips in your phone. Facebook is probably the biggest data gathering agency on earth and it is probably one of the most effective tools of gathering data. Even at the doors advise to use it to your advantage but don't let it use you when you give it too much personal information which includes your photos. And even if you do not have a smartphone or any social network site or app they can still monitor you. Google, also an intelligence gathering system, has tapped into the AI, the artificial intelligence side of things, 
making the future look very dystopian. And Apple has also tapped into that era, secretly buying up different Digitech companies to expand its own empire and integrate us all digitally, making us less social beings as God created us to be. But though it seems on one face she is in conflict with the intelligence community, she is the one leading the world into a cashless society. And she does not even hide it. She brags about it and is open that she will lead the world into a cashless society. That doesn't really look like an open warfare against the government, but a collaboration that is designed to eventually suck the whole world in. The tech and intelligence are one and the same. Billionaire Peter Thiel co-founded PayPal and co-founded tech company Palantir, whose clients are the FBI and the CIA. On the official website of the Bilderberg, he is on the steering committee, so he is in with the big boys. And this CIA-funded data mining juggernaut also works for the big banks like Credit Suisse. So it looks like there is a conflict, but there isn't one. For the head of the FBI decided to have a meeting where they will all work together, as documented by Reuters News Agency. And who was to attend this intelligence tech meeting? It records that invited participants included White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough, Presidential Counterterrorism Advisor Lisa Monaco, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, FBI Director James Comey, National Intelligence Director James Clapper and National Security Agency Director Mike Rogers, one of the sources said. Twitter, Apple Inc, Facebook and Google are attending, the company said. Several other internet firms including Microsoft Corp and Dropbox are expected to attend according to those familiar with the meeting. Most companies are expected to send high-ranking executives, but not their chief executive officers. And their objection is to combat terrorism by infiltrating more and more of our data in the digital world. But something doesn't quite feel right in this so-called global war on terror. We are told how many more jihadi bombers are out there. So there could be some lonely wolf who would kill for his cause. But on the front cover on the Mail on Sunday, dated to March 27, 2016, an insider exposed that the UK aids and funds terrorists through UK taxpayers' money. Are the Muslims being used for a wider cause? And are these attacks, which regularly destroys innocent human lives, really just false flags or pre-runs for something much bigger? Who knows? But there is a power that is going to capitalise on all of this chaos and use it to her advantage under the cloak and dagger tactic of world peace. If you told your average person that the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church, wants to claim the whole planet as her fiefdom, they would definitely want to section under the Mental Health Act. She has cleverly distorted history and throughout the 20th century infiltrated governments and the majority of the Protestant churches. These churches no longer believe that the papacy is the beast power of Revelation chapter 13 and 17. Christians today who have embraced a unscriptural, secular, paganized postmodern worldview believe that the beast is a computer in Brussels, no longer a system run by fallen mortals whose leaders parade themselves as demigods. This current generation does not read. They have panic attacks if a video is longer than five minutes, only interested in quick flashing imagery and conspiratorial views of the world. When the papacy ruled supreme in the dark ages, it embraced the cultures of pre-Christian civilizations by adorning everywhere with colossal sized religious imagery, creating an impression of ecclesiastical megalomania and papal pomp. How could you not be mesmerized with enormous colossus pillars? 
huge statues of cardinals and popes and pagan imagery. On the doors of these panels you could see a continuation of the religious system of Nimrod, the mighty hunter, the centaur, also known as Sagittarius, one of the astrological gods that was adopted into papal Rome from Greece, the foundation of European culture. But the Greeks borrowed it from Babylon. And above this deity is the oldest symbol in the world of the sun, the cross. In February 2016, the Pope met with the head of Instagram, Kevin Systrom. And guess what for? Instagram CEO Kevin Systrom met with Pope Francis on Friday to discuss the power of images to unite people across different cultures and languages. This now adds to the papal clientele of the tech world where in January the Pope met the head of Apple who was ushering in slowly and gradually the cash society and the head of Google Inc. The Vatican also does business with Microsoft so papal Rome is connected everywhere and the head and founder of Wikipedia Jimmy Wales praises the late John XXIII and he attends a Vatican meeting to discuss abortion. It is fair to say that all roads lead to Rome. But why cannot the world see that she is a global player? According to the Win and Gallup International, the world's leading association in market research and polling, the Pope in March 2016 is the most popular leader on the entire planet. An atheist says he is a world leader we need. In a PR move, he kisses the feet of Muslim, Hindu and Christian refugees. When he first came into power, he said that all religions should unite. And religions are pushing for a one world religion where they say that we are all one. While he is pushing for a global government, in an interview with the Asia Times, he said, don't worry about the rise of China. For there are those who believe he deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. And he is to receive the 2016 Charlemagne Prize for helping to strengthen European unity. But there are always the odd few out there who can read in between the lines of media hype and occasionally will have the platform of a secular journal to tell the truth. A journalist in the New York Post said what you're seeing is a pantomime for a bigger, more sinister plan. He said that the Pope endorsed the Iran deal, the UN's environmental goals and what amounts to a worldwide open borderless policy on refugees and offered a very specific view of how to promote development in the third world that's straight out of a left-wing textbook. When a leader speaks in these sorts of bureaucratic specifics, he is descending from the highest heavens into ordinary, even trivial, reality. He's using his authority in the realm of the spiritual to influence the political behavior of others. But what about Islam? How will the papacy keep her in check? If you ever come across this 734 page book, published in 1990 titled The Keys of This Blood. Pages 284 and 285 outlines her plans for Islam. The late Pope John Paul II kissed the Islamic's holy book, the Quran. It was an ecumenical tactic to lure Islam in. His successor, Pope Benedict XVI, continued Pope John Paul II's mission by strengthening a stronger alliance with the Islamic world. Though ISIS says its number one goal is to conquer Rome, Islamic terrorists said that they will not be targeting Rome. When Pope Francis I visited Ground Zero in New York in September 2015, he was embraced by an Imam, strengthening even closer ties to Islam, and that Islamic leader in the Huffington Post said, France's visit, said Imam Said M. Said, is even more important for Muslims than it is for Catholics. 
This Pope, the Imam said, is our Pope. The Pope beatified Palestinian nuns. Was it because they were saintly? No. It was a political tactic to win over Palestinian sympathy, which has recognized the Palestinian state, not for their love for Muslims, but to get more of a foothold into a territory they believe is rightly theirs. The papacy has also strengthened stronger ties with Iraq and she's leaving no stone unturned. But with such global influence, it is very strange that the most respected and skilled mainstream journalists and investigative journalists bypass her and seem to ignore her role in the Mark of the Beast New World Order agenda. Why is that? In the Catholic Herald, the late January 2016 edition, its front cover reads Iran and the Vatican, a dangerous new alliance. But why is there little media coverage? The journal says that the Holy See and Iran have had diplomatic relations since 1954. Iran has more diplomats accredited to the Holy See than any other nation except the Dominican Republic. The Vatican's relationship with Tehran has been healthy for years and it's getting steadily warmer. The subject doesn't get much media attention and even if it did, the information might not be reliable. They are two notoriously opaque centers of power. So who is this 666 system? Well, stay tuned for more studies and you will know exactly who the system is talking about.